On from Lion King of the Hill then, we starting the rally this year on Friday night from Bushy Park, as Ezra had mentioned earlier. This year, the rally will start at 6 p.m. with the first of two special stages at Bushy Park. We are using the Race of Champions configured track, which means that the cars will be running side by side, basically at about one minute intervals or until the previous race is completed. We will be starting the cars in reverse order, so we're starting with the slowest cars first and finishing the first stage with the fastest cars, which should give anyone that's trying to get out of Bush Park ample time to see all the quick boys. Of course, it's not the only people you come to see, but there will be plenty of action running right through to the end of probably the first stage. We estimate to be around 7.45, 7.30. And then, and then we have a very, very short break, and then we run the stage a second time. The first two stages count as stages one and two for Sol Rally Barriers. So from the get-go, you will be competing for time, competitors will be. Gates for Bushy Park will be open from 4.30 in the afternoon. And there is an early bird admission fee of $10, $15 a day. Again, we try to keep that as low as possible, working with obviously the circuit operators to make this as attractive as the event as possible. And obviously, it's gonna be under lights, you've got Guys racing, racing, competing side by side and not racing. The reality is that these guys are competing against the clock, so it is stage times thereafter, but obviously you're lining up next to somebody who uh, you should really pay any attention to, to be quite honest. But if it so happens that we end up with uh, Mr. Skeet lined up against next, next to Mr. Bird uh, for the final run, I have no doubt as to who the uh, major spectators will be rooting for, irrespective of the fact that, again, they're not actually racing. <laughs> From there we go straight into the meet in the manor, which is 21 stages for her over two days. We start on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock from Central Service at Simpson Motors. The route takes us uh, to the north of the island. We're not going as far north as we did in previous years. The first stage is at Sailor Gully. From there we go straight to uh, a new, a slightly new configured stage. We're starting from Haggett's near to the entrance to Lakes in Belle Plaine and running all the way up to the top of Springvale. That will be second venue, stage two. And the third stage, we are running from Highland Outdoor Tours, which is near the entrance to Welsh from Hall Gully, past Cane Field, down Fortress Hill, up past Jutes, and again into Vaucluse, through Vaucluse Circuit, and down Highlands Hill. And that is the third venue. We run those three loops, which form 11 stages, 10 stages over the base, the course of Sunday, we have four runs at both Sailor Gully and at Vaucru stage, but we drop Haggett's for the third, for the probably the fourth run. Basically, we're, we're, the route this year is very compact. Uh, one of the things that in setting it, we have been, we've tried to do very clearly is, is to make sure that the three stages when competitors start, they're actually competitive back-to-back -back stages, that they are very close together. Um, it, it enhances the competition. Uh, and this year, we have uh, an extremely uh, limited space between stages two and three, which should be very, very interesting for competitors. Extremely interesting. Because essentially, you have about a 10 or 15 minute transit between stages two and three and then you have to go again, in which is actually the longest stage of the rally, which is Highland to uh, Highland Hill. That is day one. We finish with two stages that are at night, one at Vaucluse to finish off Sunday, and the one previous will be at Sailor Gun. So both those stages are actually run at night. On Sunday then, we, we leave Simpson Motors again, and we are going straight from Simpson Motors to what is traditionally the eastern stages uh, held in the eastern part of the island. This year we've changed this up slightly in that we're, we're running a stage from Drax Hall to Pool, which is a traditional stage that's been out of rotation for about two or three years, but this year we're bringing it back. Uh, that is about, I think, six, yeah, about six kilometers. Uh, it's a quite traditional stage, quite high speed in parts, but it encompasses the very popular duck pond. From there we go to Malvern. This year we have a slightly different end to Malvern, something we haven't used in a long time. Uh, we're starting a traditional spot at Malvern, running past Malvern Wall, down Wilson Hill, through Redland, past Happy Pond, 
And instead of going straight down what we call the Gata Road to end opposite Andrews Factory, we're actually turning left and stopping about another kilometre further on just before Sweetvale Village. From there we then go to Jackney Box Gully. And with the government kindly fixing the road, we are running a brand new stage for us anyway, uh, and one which has not been run for about 15 years. This stage starts after you leave Prouts, you turn left into the road that links Jack and Box Gully with Hopewell. And we will start the stage there in Jack and Box Gully. And that stage runs all the way out to the main road, goes past Hopewell Plantation, up Hangman's Hill, through Vaucluse, and finishes on the straight past Duke's Plantation. That is the third venue for Sunday's stages. We have 95 cars this in our provisional entry. There is a record 26 cars in the four-year classes, uh, beating the record we previously saw in 2008-2025. There is a record 44 overseas entries. There are drivers and co-drivers from a record 17 different countries, including Barbies, and a record 70 international drivers or co-drivers, 36, half, which are new to the events. Uh, and I want to mention that especially because the work that we have done with the event over the last three years and had considerable assistance from both the PTMI uh, as well as the TDC uh, has clearly started to pay dividends. Mark and I had a meeting with the TDC a couple of weeks ago and uh, we spoke now about where we need to take this based on the fact that we literally are near a capacity entry on what we can accommodate in terms of all these cars. Literally we are at that point. Uh, so it's time to bring fans in on the drones to watch the event. We have 51 local entries, um, a record 15 female competitors, which goes well, and uh, cars from 13 manufacturers, with Ford being best represented with 27, followed by Toyota. We had 119 entries received online, but 24 withdrawals, 20 of which were international entries for various reasons. So as a person who wants to run this event, I, I have to admit that I'm not sorry about the number of withdrawals, but that, that's where it stands. In WRC1, uh, we have Roger Steep obviously defending his title this year. He is going to be up against Mr. Paul Bird, who is returning. Uh, Fraser Loudon, who is a new entry from Scotland. Peter Morris, uh, a return competitor from some time back from Trinidad. Jeffrey Panton, who is uh, going to provide some fireworks this year for sure. John Powell, and of course Rob Swan uh, from the UK, who finished second overall last year and is very much a contender. The other car that's been ended for the event this year is the Simpson Motors built and developed Suzuki SX4. And it has been ended for Mr. Tony Gardermeister and Mr. Timo Alan from Finland. Tony is a former works WRC driver and has competed for the Suzuki WRC team in the past before they withdrew from the championship. He will be driving the SX4 this year on the event. Obviously there's a hell of a two-wheel drive battle going as well. And when I look at the entry in SM10, it, it actually gives me shivers to be quite honest. You've got Neil Armstrong, Toyota Starlet, Brett Clark, Citroen C2, Stuart Maloney, Peugeot 306 Maxi, Dick Major, Ford Escort, Roger Mears, Starlet, Josh Reed, Starlet, Cliff Roy, Starlet. Now, if that isn't the almost the creme de la creme of two wheel drive competitors all competing in the same class, I don't know why it is. Then, of course, you have to throw in some obscenely fast escorts that seem to have appeared out of England and Scotland. And, and uh, our defending rally club champion, Brett Watson, who's competing as BMW. It would, it would take an awful long time to go through this list as our 95, but those there are the highlights in terms of four wheel drive sharpening, two wheel drive sharpening. That he, he would form part of a. This is a gentleman who's bringing what is reputed to be the fastest Mark II escort in England to compete on our shows this year. Finally, I just want to uh, bring your attention to 
one of the things, one of the, in the lead up to this event, um, we've done a number of things to commemorate the 25th anniversary. One of which is we've produced a, a line of apparel uh, which do that. And obviously, the wood self is all our evidence reflects the 25 years of all stage rally. The other thing we've done is we have produced a commemorative magazine of 25 years of the rally itself. Uh, this is a 100 page document which documents um, all the women's 25 years of the event. Uh, it also documents the rally this year and chronicles the last seven or eight years of the club's activities. This will be for sale uh, in limited numbers and we also have, which is free, uh, a handout which actually contains uh, pull out, which contains the special stage schedule, times, as well as stage maps and the entries. So they're two separate items. This one is printed more of, this one is printed less. <laughs> That's the price. 